Hi, this is Subramanyam Shankaran. So, um, in my CSSP class or in any of my cyber security classes, including the NIST CSF, CDPO and CISO, okay, or ISO 27001. Now, we touch upon the topic of the business continuity, rather IT continuity. Okay, so IT continuity comes under the business continuity. Now, whenever we speak about the business continuity planning, we need to plan for five things. Okay, number one, loss of the civil infrastructure. If the building is actually damaged. Okay, you don't have a place to work. So where else you can actually work? Okay, so that could be an, um, you know, a disaster recovery site or people call it as a BCP site. Or you can have a reciprocal arrangement with another organization. Or this could be an, an, a site on the wheels. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, options available for us. So you have to plan for loss of a building. And loss of IT, if your um, IT infrastructure is actually down, okay, how are you going to back it up is your loss of IT. Okay, it could be an, uh, you know, DR site or a BCP site, or you can have a hot site, warm site, okay, cold site, okay, or you can have, again, have uh, the data center on the wheels. Okay, I think uh, HP Enterprise had a project called Green Lake uh, Project where, you know, there's a container. Okay, containing the data center, they can drive it to your location and your data center is available immediately. There are videos on the YouTube, okay, from a company called Delta as well for this. So you are loss of IT and loss of suppliers, okay? For example, it could be a human resource, it could be electricity, it could be water, blah, blah, blah. So we need to identify the supplies and the suppliers, okay? And we also need to ensure that uh, we plan for the backup, okay? And loss of a person, supposedly, um, an employee who, who's working, employer, contractor, vendor, consultant, whosoever it is. Going for a particular department, especially in IT, if he or she is not available, so what is the plan B? Okay, so we need to plan for loss of a building, loss of an IT infrastructure, loss of an, uh, you know, the uh, supplier, and loss of um, an person who is actually working. The last one is loss of access to a building. To be honest, Okay, I'm in this, into this training and cybersecurity industry, okay, since 1997. So before 2020, uh, whenever there's a, whenever we discuss about loss of access to a building, we always uh, speak about loss of access to a building from the, uh, the building perspective. For example, uh, I, I leave my uh, home, okay, I reach the office, and, uh, you know, I'm not able to enter the office, okay, but after 2020, okay, the COVID times, the lockdown, Loss of access to a building could also be at your own premises. So, like the network packet could get lost at your premises or the ISP or the destination. Okay, you can also be in a position not to get out of your house. Okay, or you are somewhere uh, locked up, uh, you know, in the transit. Okay, you are driving on the road, there's a congestion, and you are not able to reach your destination, or you're trying to get onto a bus or a train or a flight. Okay, or train is cancelled, bus is cancelled. Okay, flight is cancelled, etc. You are not able to reach your destination, and it could also be at the destination. Okay, so whenever we plan for a business continuity, we need to plan for loss of civil infrastructure, loss of IT infrastructure, loss of the supplier, loss of the human resource, and loss of access to the building. The reasons for things to fail, okay, reasons or uh, for these failures could be multiple. Okay, for example. The loss of IT infrastructure could be because of the power failure, could be because of the hardware failure, could be because of an hacker, DDoS attack. It could be various, but you need to plan for this five situation and also identify the root cause for this five situation to actually happen and then okay, put in your plan for business continuity. And in fact, a, um, a one, one thing we should always understand, the control that we are actually putting in to ensure that okay, we have a fallback should also be tested periodically, okay? Because, you know, I once spoke to um, uh, Mr. Vijay Surya Narayan, okay, who is the, uh, who's heading, um, you know, he's senior manager for HP Enterprise for Asia's largest cloud data center, okay, in Bangalore for R&D. And he was telling me, you know, uh, um, you know, the, the diesel gensets require the diesel, okay, on the containers to always be available at the office premises, but the diesel, in the containers are prone for contamination. We are going to be holding it for more than a few days. So uh, we need to send the existing containers after we get the uh, two new containers full of diesel. So the control that you actually have to help you, okay, to uh, during the business continuity or disaster recovery 
Here for security are also prone for vulnerabilities. You should have a clear understanding of all the all, all, what vulnerabilities are existing in the controls, okay, that you think it will help you and also ensure that those kind of vulnerabilities are also uh, addressed, okay, they are all mitigated. Now, if you go to nvd.nist.gov, okay, if you put in uh, type the name firewall or just antivirus, okay, or uh, SOAR or a CASB or IDS, IPS devices, we can get to know there are products, okay, um, uh, that fall under these these controls. And they're also vulnerable. Okay, the firewall that you think will secure you against any of the network intrusion is also vulnerable for that attack. So it's always prudent to ensure that we we know what our existing vulnerabilities are. We also know the vulnerabilities that are existing in the controls that we actually have. So the uh, vulnerability management for our assets and vulnerability management for the controls, vulnerability management for the site, vulnerability management for the people, vulnerability management for the civil infrastructure and the suppliers. It should encompass your overall vulnerability management program. Okay, thank you very much. Join us for the winning training programs and join us for your job support or assistance and join us for the training. Thank you very much. Cheers, Zimbabwe. Have a good day.